Now let's use what we know about finding center of mass to locate the center of mass of a semicircle. So exactly where is that spot located? Now, we could ask the question, where's the center of mass of a complete circle? But that's trivial. We know that's located right at its geometric center. So to find the center of mass of a semicircle, we're going to use the same formula we did to find the center of mass of a right triangle. The location of the center of mass along the x-axis is 1 divided by total mass times the integral of x dm. And simultaneously, the center of mass along the y-axis is equal to 1 divided by total mass times the integral of y dm. Now, if we look at the symmetry of a semicircle, we know this much. If we place our semicircle on the xy axis, then we know the location of the center of mass coordinate on the x axis, xcm, is going to equal 0. So we're really just trying to figure out what's the location of the center of mass along the y axis. So here's the question, how do I picture what my element of integration looks like? What do I mean when I say dm? So we can turn this rigid body, this solid object, into a collection of discrete particles if we make a bunch of slices like this. Right? Thin slices working our way up the y-axis. Each one of those slices has a thickness to it that we would label as dy. And the mass of any one of those slices has a mass of dm. So again, our approach is going to be to recognize that this semicircle has a uniform area mass density. If we take the total mass of the semicircle and divide it by its total area, which, by the way, a full circle has an area of pi r squared, so a semicircle has an area of 1 half pi r squared. When we do the calculation of the number of kilograms per square meter, we should get the same value for the whole semicircle as we do if we try to take the density, the kilograms per square meter, of just one of these slices. So one of these slices has a half width of x and a height of dy. So the little bit of area taken up by any given slice is equal to 2x. 2x times dy. The idea being total mass over total area gives just the same density as the fractional mass divided by the fractional area. So dm, once again, is equal to capital M over capital A times dA. So let's make that substitution. The location of the center of mass is 1 over M times the integral of y dm, where dm is substituted with M over A dA. Let's rewrite the formula. Y times M over A times, I should say, DA, but again, I make another substitution and replace DA with 2x dy. The M's cancel out and I can pull the 2 and the a out of the integral. So the location of the center of mass along the y-axis is 2 over a times the integral of x, y, dy. Let's uh, look at our picture one more time and make sure we understand exactly what we're integrating. There's our semicircle. There's one of the little elements of mass that makes up the whole semicircle. That dm has a width of dy. 
we can identify some angle. Now if we drew a different dm, then the angle would be a larger value, but the one thing that stays the same is the distance from the origin to the perimeter of the semicircle. So what we have as a right triangle with a base of x, a height of y, a hypotenuse of r, and we've identified this angle theta. So let's look at all of our uh, trigonometric values. Cosine of theta would be equal to x over r, and sine of theta is equal to y over r. Or another way to say that is x is equal to r cosine theta, and y is equal to r sine theta. So we can make some substitutions into our equation in order to get a calculus of a single variable. So let's express this in terms of the variable theta. ycm is 2 over a times the integral of x. Okay, x is r cosine theta. Then multiply by y. y is r sine theta. Ooh, and then we got to multiply by dy. So let's figure out what dy is. If we take the derivative of this expression, if we do dy d theta, then we get r cosine theta. Or in other words, dy is equal to r cosine theta d theta. So we have x, we have y, and now we have dy, r cosine theta d theta. Okay, the location of the center of mass somewhere here at some distance up the y-axis, the location of that center of mass is equal to 2 over 1 half pi r squared. Right? That's what the area of a semicircle is equal to. And then we have r, 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 so we've got an r cubed. And then we have the integral of cosine squared theta, cosine and cosine, yeah, cosine squared times sine theta times d theta. And again, we got a little ahead of ourselves. We haven't thought of the limits of integration yet. So let's go back to our picture and imagine what's the least value of theta and largest value of theta we have to account for. So the very first slice of our semicircle is located down at the bottom, and the angle in that case would be zero degrees. And then the very last little slice is way up here at the top, where theta is equal to 90 degrees. So we're integrating from 0 to 90 degrees. And this is a case for u substitution. If we let u equal cosine theta, then du is negative sine theta d theta. So let's see what that leads us to. Location of the center of mass is equal to, we can simplify this as 4 over pi, and then the r squared cancels, and we're left with 4 over pi times r times the integral of u squared, right? Cosine squared, and u is equal to cosine. So the integral of u squared, and then we have a sine theta d theta. There's a sine theta d theta. So this is a negative du. And then our limits of integration change. We are integrating from theta equals 0 to theta equals 90. That means we're going from u equals, well, what's the cosine of 0? That's 1. And then we're going to 90 degrees, and the cosine of 90 is 0. So we're integrating from 1 to 0. We could get rid of this negative sign by switching our limits of integration. So let's do that. The location of the center of mass along the y-axis is equal to 4 over pi times r times the integral of u squared du evaluated from 0 to 1, and that's equal to 4 over pi times r times 1 third 
u cubed evaluated from 0 to 1, which just gives us 1 third. So we've got our final answer, the location of the center of mass along the y-axis for a semicircle is equal to 4 over 3 pi times the radius. And if you grab a calculator, I think you can see that's the same thing as saying it's 4, approximately 4 over 9.4 times r, which is the same thing as about 42% of the radius. So if we draw the picture once again, there's our semicircle, and we're trying to figure out how far up from the base of our semicircle is that center of mass located. And if this whole distance right here represents the radius, then this is about 42%.